All right, so we had taught, I mentioned that forests are a, a major carbon sink, a place for storing away carbon. Um, it ends up, though, that to really get our heads around this whole idea, we have to realize that deforestation is responsible for 17% of the greenhouse gases. That's more, I, and I, there's a video link I want you to watch, but that's more than all cars, the, the pollution from cars, trucks, and um, ships. Uh, you know, anyway, watch the video. It's, it's a large portion of the greenhouse gases. It results from this de, the deforestation that is occurring. Um, it's, as I said, we're, it's real easy to point your fingers at people when it's not you. And so we, we're always saying how terrible. And this video kind of um, is about the, um, the, the logging industry and the temperate areas. They're promoting um, stopping, stopping the, the burning of the rainforest. Uh, so they have a little bit of an ulterior motive. But, but it's true what they say. The statistics that they're going to talk about is true. Now, temperate rainforest. We have them here in our own country, Seattle, Washington, that part of uh, the U.S., just below British Columbia, where we had talked about the case history with the, the Great Bear Rainforest. Um, these areas are also under threat. And believe it or not, the National Forest Service, which oversees the public lands, they, until very recently, they, until very recently, were really... Uh, driven by economics. The economics of the forest industry, the lumber industry, were what drove their decision-making process. And it wasn't until 1994 that some of this changed. And so all of a sudden, finally in 1994, they changed how they made their decisions on leasing of lands and allowing lands to be harvested. And what did they include in it? Um, they now, in 1994, they decided that maybe they should look at the ecology of these areas. That was never even a consideration. It was always just about the business side of things. And of course, the, 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 this was very, um, uh, not a popular thing, that they said we should actually start bringing science into our decision-making process. Um, um, but it ends up, there are, they now consider things like the spotted owl. And I, I mentioned some time ago, um, there's a spotted owl. And when we were talking about the Endangered Species Act and, and talking about vulnerable species, I mentioned this owl. Well, this owl lives in these temperate rainforests. And so um, it's also being um, the needs of it and other um, endangered species, even including salmon, by the way, uh, are being considered in the decision-making process. Now, I mentioned salmon because what happens, salmon spawn in streams and rivers, and when you cut the trees, you get a lot of erosion, and they require clean, um, uh, not silty water to spawn in, and in these, a lot of the streams, uh, had lost their native salmon populations because of this uh, silt problem from the runoff erosion of soil. So, so now I'm happy to say, um, at least there are we are considering ecological signi significant um, events in the decision making process.